All right then, so now Gatsby has generated pages for each of our projects and it uses the slug for that project as the path, the route. So we can click on each of these to see that project details page. Now, this project details page is based on the template we created down here, project details. And at the minute, it's the same for each project that we click on. We just see title and stack. Now, ideally, we want to show the details for each project on this page when we click on it. So how do we do that? Well, remember, when in Gatsby node, we created the pages, we used this property right here, context. And this is an object where we pass in a property called slug. And that is the slug of that particular project. So we get access to this query variable that we pass in to the template inside our query. But how do query variables actually work? Well, let's try this inside graphical first of all. So what I'd like to do is get one markdown file inside our template page over here, because all we're doing is showing the details for one file. And we're going to use the slug as a query variable to determine which file we get. So first of all, let me close all markdown remark, and then I'm going to open up this markdown remark. So remember, all markdown remark gets us all of the markdown files. This one, markdown remark, just gets us a single one. So let me open that first of all, and that adds it right here. Okay, so next we need to tell GraphQL which markdown page we want. And the way we're going to do that is by saying we want it to have a specific front matter. So this right here, this is just a query argument. We've seen those in the past, like when we've ordered queries. So we're going to base it on the slug right here, and we're going to say that it has to equal a specific thing. Now, we can't hard code this. We can't say that it has to be, you know, the coffee shop or whatever the slug was for that project or the drum shop or anything like that, because it's going to be different each time around. So this value right here needs to be variable. It needs to change. So the way we add a variable to our queries is by coming up here where we define the query at the top. And then all I need to do is add in parentheses and then the query name using a dollar sign. So dollar sign, then slug, which is what we called the variable right here in Gatsby node, slug. So it has to match. So right here, we're saying we want this to be a variable and then we do colon and the type of variable it is, the type of data, it's going to be a string. And then down here, instead of hard coding this, we can just say slug like so. And that's all we need to do. So now it uses whatever value is passed in as a query variable. Okay then. So after we have the markdown remark, we want the HTML. So let's grab that, click HTML there. And then we also want the front matter. So let me click front matter. And then from that, we want the stack. We also want the title as well. And we also want the featured image. Remember, we added that in. And remember, that is going to be a child image sharp. So I'm going to click on this and then fluid. And then I'm just going to click on source. But later on, we're going to replace this with that fragment Gatsby image sharp fluid that we've seen so far. So then the first thing I'm going to do is grab all of this from here, because if we try to play this here, then we don't really know what the slug is yet. It does get us something, but the slug is not really defined. What I'm going to do is grab this and I'm going to paste it at the bottom of this project details template. So we have to export this, remember. So I'll say export const query is equal to GraphQL, like so. We want to import that, so click on this. Make sure it imports it at the top right here. Then our back ticks, and then we're going to paste in this query, like so. OK, then. So how does it know that the slug is going to be the value that we need? Well, like I said earlier, this thing right here, this context, this is passed in as a variable. So this value of slug will be passed in to this thing right here. So it takes on this variable value automatically. And then we're going to use that variable right here to get a specific markdown file. And then once we have that, we're getting all of the data from it. And then we can access all of this data now inside this project details components. So let us first of all destructure 
the data there. And then what I'd like to do is get a few different things. First of all, we want the HTML and then we want a few things from the front matter. So let's get the HTML first. I'm going to destructure HTML and that's going to come from data dot mark down remark. So remember, we go into markdown remark first and then we get the HTML. So we're destructuring from that. Okay, so next we want a few things from the front matter. So I'm going to say const and we want the title property. We want the stack. We want the featured image as well. Okay, and that comes from data dot markdown remark dot front matter. So we're grabbing all of these properties from the front matter right here, including the featured image. So we can use this in our image tag shortly. First of all, though, let's output the title dynamically. Let's output the stack dynamically. And also, let me uncomment this. We want to output the HTML inside here as well. Now, the way we do that in a React component is by adding in an object right here, then a property in that object, which is double underscore HTML. And then we say, what the value of the HTML is going to be. In our case, it's just this thing right here. So let's paste that in. Okay, so now we have the HTML. Let's also do the image. So this right here is going to be featured image dot child image sharp dot fluid because we have to go into the featured image, then child image sharp, then fluid. And by the way, we need to replace this with dot 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 Gatsby image sharp fluid. Okay, so now this should all work. Fingers crossed. What I'm going to do is come over here and yep, we get an error. And that's because we have two queries, the same name. So this is a good opportunity to show you something that throws an error. So you know, like if we come down here, we have a query name project page. This has to be unique in the project. So you can see it's called this here, but also in our pages, if we go to the project index, it's called this here as well. We can't have two queries that are called the same thing. So we have to call this one something different. So I'm going to call this project details instead. And now if I save this and I'm going to go back over here, I'm going to refresh then go to portfolio project, then click on one of these and now it works. Awesome. So let's try a few of these. I'm going to go to here and it looks like we're getting the same image for every single page. So what I'm going to do is just restart the development server. I'm going to come over here, cancel out of this, and then I'm going to run Gatsby develop again. And now if I go back over here, I'm going to go to portfolio projects like so. If I click on one of these, Yep, I think it's loading in the correct images now. Yep, all seems to work. Awesome. So now we know how to generate dynamic pages based on external data and a template file. This technique is good for any kind of data source which might change over time, like blog posts, projects, etc. So next up, we're going to see how to build this app for production and deploy the static site to Netlify.